All right, folks, Simon here. Welcome to another Chandrian Invitational 7x7 TAC tournament match. This is the final uh, standard game in this tournament. This is Goelja versus Fwib. Now, I say this is the final game because it is, in fact, the final game based on this round robin. Uh, this is the only match that has yet to be played, and this is a big one because, as we saw yesterday, Fwib and Abyss faced off. Abyss won, taking him to four wins. Fwib, if he beats Goelja, also comes to four wins and two losses, the same as Abyss. That means that these two players would face off and play each other in Blitz games. That's right, Blitz 7x7 seven seven games. Uh, and they would play pairs of those until somebody won both games in a pair. Now, Abyss did do this last year when he tied for first with No Hat Coder. And No Hat Coder ended up coming out on top. And so this is Abyss's second chance to come out uh, to, 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 to go against someone in the finals like this with Blitz 7x7 games, which is just insane. Uh, if you never played 7x7, it's insane. If you never played Blitz, it's also insane. If you've played them both, you still don't know what it's like for a Blitz 7x7 game. It's just nuts. So, this is, again, the standard rule set, which means it is played 15 minutes on the clock with a 20 second increment and two Komi. That means two is added to Black's flat count score if the game does not end in a road. And then, of course, the big difference between sevens and sixes, uh, except for the size, of course, is two capstones. That would be two capstones played per player, and uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a pretty huge difference. So, without any further ado whatsoever, let's jump right in to this one-game match between Fwib and Goelja. And the first move we see down here at A1. And opposite corners here. Fwib opting for the opposite corner opening. Let's see if White immediately takes the center square. He does not. He goes slightly off center, which I find interesting. I do feel like that center square is a lot stronger. But uh, but no, he's not going for it. Black also not taking that center square. Going to be playing off to the side here. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. White playing off to the side. This is an open spot for a capstone. We can see an early capstone on turn three here from White uh, from Black dropping that there, but he doesn't go for it. Instead, just places a flat. I think it's nice to get early capstones in on 7x7. Seven seven. It's nice to get early capstones in on any size, really, but on 7x7, seven seven especially because you do have that second one. So it's not like you're worried about having it uh, not be part of the game and get, get sucked out. That you've got still have that, uh, that secondary capstone to bring in to play. All right, white content to keep building for this vertical line. Black dropping that capstone finally here along this vertical line as well, ready to cut everything off. Um, white can still move off to the side for the horizontal here uh, or down below, I guess, not as strong, but up here is better. Uh, black able to cut off that horizontal as well with that same capstone placement, so really strong capstone placement there. All right, the F6 played, still going for that vertical line, it looks like, and Black still content to go for that horizontal. I'd say Black is in a better position here only because they do have that capstone. Capstone is in the game, and that is uh, pretty powerful. All right, White finally dropping that capstone down here. This is a good one too. It also has the ability to cut off all of what Black is going for. Black immediately builds up here at C4. Now this is smart because now Black doesn't need this flat down here at D3 to continue on. If White comes up with this, Black just comes up with E3 and then boom, has that horizontal line still. 
We may be seeing that E3 plus move here momentarily to keep uh, that line available. Though we may see a wall or a capstone up here instead. We do see that capture happen. Second capstone from white dropping right next to each other. Oh, I haven't seen a lot of those. Black immediately comes up with that capstone, not ready to relinquish this stack and let white liberate that captive underneath. It'll be a very strong position, especially with this position already built out for white. So white is doing some work here, doing some, uh, some, some strong positioning play. White now probably wants to do something about this area as black could decide to drop their own second capstone here to really solidify this spot and keep white from capturing anything over there. Uh, that would be really strong also. I don't know. There's, there's a lot that can be done with this uh, positioning here. And what are we seeing? Black taking his time. Sorry, white taking their time. Ends up bringing this capstone stack, the whole thing, all the way up onto D4. Both players still playing fairly quick, despite Guelja taking a bit of time on that last turn. Uh, both above that start time of 15 minutes. Again, because of that 20 second increment, getting 20 seconds added to their clock after every turn they take. <sighs> that is a big one there. Black can't really do anything along this horizontal line anymore. I would not be surprised to see something play out down here or up here so that white, black could bring this whole stack again over onto F3 and spread upwards. Um, that might not be bad, so playing a black flat here at F7, for example, could work with that. Um, playing down here at G3 or G2 could also work. But doesn't want to make that capture move yet, that's for sure. Black still has that second capstone ready to drop. Black instead making the connection, sort of connection, over here off to the side with B2, ready to make that horizontal line, I guess. Uh, maybe going to be going above it. White sees that, decides, okay, I'll place above it C5, then I can go for this horizontal line. I can work for my vertical line. Black drops that second capstone, just denying white the ability to go for that horizontal up above. And we see all four capstones grouped tightly together here. That's something that we've seen in a lot of these 7x7 seven seven games, is we've seen these capstones all be really, really tight together in a lot of these games. And I don't know if that's just because they're using these capstones to block each other a lot more with the two capstones or if there's something else at play here. I like the idea of blocking capstones with other capstones. There was one game in particular I saw, I can't remember who was playing, but there was there were two capstones blocking off the opponent's capstones from one half of the board. So there were capstones here blocking off, let's say, Black's capstones here from where all the action was going on over here. And so I can definitely see that being a bit more of a strategic play with two capstones since you can kind of hem them in together, but uh, I don't know. I think we're going to be seeing some interesting stuff like that here in the near future. White playing off to the side here, going for this horizontal threat down below, able to come across and then bring this C5 down at some point. Black content to keep playing up above, that's why they're playing over here at, uh, at B3 to be able to come up onto B4 at some point as well, if necessary. Black comes over with the capstone instead, going for this vertical line. It keeps... Ooh, but now will we see Black fill in here, potentially, at D4? 
d4 is good because it works towards the horizontal here and the horizontal down below. Instead, he plays up at d5. I find that fascinating because white wants to play at d4 and d3 or also d4 and d5. So d4 would have been would have made a lot of sense to me there, but instead going for the d5 placement. What is black's plan? I'm not, I don't really understand the d5 instead of a d4 there, but goes for the d4 now. Hmm. White may decide to play up at d6 to be able to come down. Or white could play off at g3, keep going for that, able to cut off white's horizontal anchor point here at g4. That would probably be a pretty good play, playing a white flat at g3, as it does work towards the horizontal and for this cutoff. And that same cutoff can also work towards a vertical for white, being able to go down below at e1. And that's exactly what he does, he plays there at g3. Black able to make a tack threat right now by placing at b6 or b5. Does place up at b6. This does not require a capture, but white goes for that capture anyways. White likely to make a play down here at e1 on the next turn if black allows it, because white wants to make that tack threat. Black dropping a wall right away. I think we may be seeing here white's g4 stack come left onto f5 and then potentially this black wall come left onto f3 to sort of chase it and cut off that vertical threat. I don't think black wants to relinquish this hard capstone just yet, especially given that white capstone wanting to come up onto it. Um, we could see this white cap come over onto the F3 wall, if that's exactly how that thing plays out. I'm not sure. Alright, let's see what we're looking at here. White doesn't want to relinquish that stack, though. I know that. It almost feels like they have to make that play. White could switch gears playing at d6 to be able to come down. Blue White brings that capstone over, which is... Very unexpected. Now, black could potentially just bring this whole stack over, bring just the capstone over. If he brings just the capstone over, I think we might see uh, white take this capstone and capture onto e4 to liberate the captive and also continue this vertical threat and cut off black's horizontal. But uh, that capstone self-capturing there for that hard cap, that is an interesting play. Because we know that if black comes up with this, this capstone's likely going to come up as well. This is a tough one. Good positioning from both players here. Black playing down at D2. Okay. I'm not quite sure I understand why the d2 was played. But I'm sure we'll find out in just a couple moves. All right, white playing at f2 now. Trying to make that connection down at the bottom, that anchor point, building attack threat here on the next couple turns at F1, or I guess at E1, uh, probably at F1 though.
black going to need to cut that off somehow. Comes up with the wall. Now, this wall serves a couple purposes. Yes, he can come up or down with the top two flats going uh, 2G4 plus, 2G4 minus. Uh, but now he has to bring the wall stack up probably onto G6 in order to stop this tack threat from occurring. Or he could potentially bring the cap over onto F4 to stop it. But uh, I don't think that would work as well as that move right there. And that's exactly what he does. He brings that wall stack up onto G6. White can renew the threat by placing here at F7, but then this wall stack comes over and... Ooh. It's not what happens. I think Black wants to drop another wall here at F F7. Black does not want to bring G6 left because White will come up and smash and take that big stack, and that would be disastrous. I think, I think we're going to see a wall here at F7 from Black... Good edge crawling here from White. Really, really well done there. All right, we do see that second wall drop. Good play. A smart play. And White builds off to the side, ready to renew that threat. This is a tough spot here for, for Black. I'm going to drop all these walls. Three walls now, right up here in this corner. Now that that third wall is dropped, there's really nothing that White can do about this unless they want to bring their capstone up and threaten smashing. But if they do that, they leave this spot open for another wall or for the capstone to come right and ruin this line. So I don't think White wants to be doing that just now. Uh, but Black did have to drop three walls up here in order to stop this from happening. So uh, that is a victory for White in terms of uh, flat count. So let's take a look at the flat count right now, actually. It's a good time to check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for White. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus 2 Comey is 12 for Black. So they are even in terms of flat count. White now plays down here at C2, trying to keep Black from getting that Citadel position, also building towards this horizontal threat, connecting these. Black now going for the vertical, playing up at C7, getting that anchor point there. Uh, able to come around here. If he plays at B1, B2 on the next turn, that would be attack threat by coming up with D2. White now plays over at G4, making a connection for the horizontal line. But no attack threat here for White. Is going to have to drop uh, a flat here at E3 before that would be attack threat or capture up onto C3 with C2 for attack threat. So I think at this point, Black probably wants to play at B1 or A2. I like, I like uh, which one do I like better? I think I like A2 better. Um, yeah, A2 I like better. And then that would be attack threat for Black. White would be forced to make some capture move in order to stop it. He goes for B1 instead of A2. All right. I liked A2 better because if C2 comes left instead of up to cut it off, then black can renew just by placing up at A3, but white can't immediately renew, or black can't immediately renew if C2 comes left. Likely won't happen. C2 probably wants to come up onto C3 to make that tag threat for white and also cut off black's threat, but this is a tag threat for black. White now trying to decide which of these moves he wants to make in order to cut off Black's threat. And it looks like Gwelja finally below that 15 minute start time. 26 moves in. 
We're just barely above it. Looks like he fell below it last turn. White does make the C2 plus move. This is now attack threat for white. Placing here at E3 would be a road. Black needs to do something about that. A placement here at E3 would not work. Decides to capture up with D2 onto D3. This is not attack threat. Again, was not able to immediately renew that threat. But he can renew the threat on the next turn, provided white doesn't make any sort of capture over here. Hmm. He's creating, they're both creating liabilities over here but capstones are close by, ready to recapture. It's a tough one, it's a tough one. White renewing the threat. Black can cut off the threat and renew their own with a placement here at C2, but instead they decide to drop a wall, ready to capture up onto C3, liberate the captive, and create a, a, a renew that attack threat. So, smart play there. I like the wall. I think that is the safer of those plays, and I also think it's pretty solid. Ooh, white brings that stack over, capturing onto d3. This keeps that stack away from the wall of black and also renews that horizontal attack threat. I think black probably wants to take this wall, bring it over onto D2, but instead comes down with the flat, which prompts an immediate recapture, and black drops yet another wall. However, it is important to note that this wall is right next to this hard capstone of black, able to come over and smash to renew anything. So not a total disaster. But black will be able to capture onto this with that wall. Uh, unless this moves somewhere. But anywhere it moves is still not great for white. Additionally, white won't be able to, to smash this wall or this wall or any wall really right now. Because that would lead to black getting a road uh, in the vertical direction here. So... White's got to be careful with their next couple moves here. And it looks like Black may have thought that through a few moves out. White maybe not thinking that Black would drop a wall right there in D4, considering that would mess up their own threats. But, uh, but that capsule right next to it makes that a viable play. That unexpected wall. I am not sure what white should be doing here. Um, anywhere this stack goes, I mean, he could throw it down to D1, I guess. He throws it over to the side, okay. I understand that, because he may want to bring the capstone down onto F3 by itself to go for a hard cap stack and be able to spread left or spread up. But I think if he went, if he does that, he's going to have to place it G3 first. So I think this is an opportunity for black. Black should play at C3. So white can take this, spread it over here. So if, if black were to play at D3 and white plays at C3, that's still attack threat for white.
Now, if black plays at c3 and white plays at g2, that's still attack threat for white also. I think black might just want to drop a wall here on g3 to, to capture that. But, I mean, they do already have five on the board, so if they're probably thinking that might not be the greatest of ideas in terms of flat count. Uh, let's take a look at their flat count yet again.
Okay, sorry. My sound appeared to have cut out. Uh, thank you, Pluto, in the chat for reminding me that. Okay, so... I was thinking, and I was saying, I don't know how long ago my sound cut out, but I like the... I was thinking about an A3 placement for black instead of the A6, or also that wall there at G3, and I think that would have been good. Um, A3 to sort of solidify this position in case the A2 right happens, then black can just fill in an A2 to continue it. But I also like this A6 placement here, going for the horizontal. Now, the horizontal is interesting because it may involve him tossing this capstone up, smashing his own at E6, and smash, 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 smash. A lot of smashes going on there, potentially. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of potential up here for Black doing his horizontal road threat. With this hard capstone and these walls available for smashing, I think there might be something there. And it could be a really strong position, but uh, I'm not sure how it can work out. Um, there's a potential that it's even a Tinue sequence, and I just can't see it. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, if it is a Tinue sequence, it is a lot of moves <laughs> to get there. Uh, and so I'd be interested to, to throw that position into... Um, into the Topaz bot, the newest bot in the TAC bot family, uh, created by Abyss, that is a Tinue finder. And so it finds fun Tinues that you can uh, you can search for in games. So I'd, I'd definitely be interested in seeing about any sort of position like that here. Uh, White now plays at G3. This is a TAC threat for White. Uh, let's explain why this is a tax threat. White leaves one white flat here. No. Never mind. Not a tax threat for white. I thought it was one. But it is not. Uh, G2 would have been a tax threat for white. But it is not. Uh, at G2. So it's G3. Not a tax threat, but solid positioning here from white. Um, able to make a hard cast stone here and make a, a play for, for that direction. Um, black coming up and smashing that wall would not be quick enough because that would not be attack threat in itself and white is able to make one on the following turn. Black dropping a wall here at G2. That might be a little too late. Um, for this. White's position is pretty strong here. I gotta say, it is a strong position. That capstone, being able to capture onto that F3 stack is, is potentially devastating for Black. How devastating? I'm not sure. Hmm. This is a tough one. And, again, this game has serious repercussions for the tournament at large. If Goelja does win against Fwib, then Abyss wins the tournament outright. If Fwib wins against Goelja, then we have to play Blitz playoff matches between Fwib and Abyss. So let's see... How this game turns out, this is uh, this is pretty big. Goelja, however, uh, I believe if he wins or if he loses, let's do a quick score check. He still comes in last place, unfortunately. But we have seen some good performances from him this tournament. Uh, interestingly, if... Um, let's see... There was something interesting about Arch Venison and Goelja. Um, if okay, no, no, never mind. It, it was if Fwib beat Abyss, um, but lost to Goelja, then his only loss would have been to uh, to like Goelja and Arch Venison or something, and then. Goelja has has only beaten Arch Venison. Yeah, it was some weird convoluted uh, relationship between the two, but I don't remember what it is. Now we're seeing 
White play here at c3. Now this is attack threat for white. Black would have to drop a wall here to stop it or bring this wall up onto c3 to stop it. And I am not sure. I mean, he could also bring b5 minus onto b4 and that would also stop that horizontal line. He decides to bring that wall up onto c3. Black does have six walls standing on the board right now. That is pretty insane. And then, hold on. So Goel just saying that my commentary must be going wild with his missed road. Did Goelja miss a road? And I not see it? All right, let's see. What road did we miss? I don't think there was a missed road here. No, I don't, I don't see the missed road. Um, this wasn't a road threat because white would have had to leave a white here and then leaving a black and then white white wouldn't have been a road there. So I don't know what he's seeing, uh, but there is no missed road that I'm aware of. Uh, but we did see that wall come up and that is the most recent move. So yeah, I think Welch is mistaken. Um, but I'd love to see what he thinks he saw. <laughs> oh, he says, never mind. <laughs> it wasn't one. So yeah, there we go. All right. I, I was, uh, I was getting a little worried that, that we had both missed a road there, but, uh, but no, that's fine. Uh, let's see. But yes, if I had spotted a missed road there, I would have been going crazy in the commentary. We have seen that a couple times in this tournament so far. I think we've seen it at least twice uh, with the games that I've covered. And I gotta say, this tournament has been pretty awesome in terms of the quality of games played and also in... In just the sheer amount of games that I've been able to cover out of all the games played in this tournament, there are seven players and it's round robin and I've covered 15 of those games. So people are scheduling at really good times for me. Um, the, the few that I've missed were scheduled for like 3 a.m. my time. So I'm not waking up to do that. I'm sorry, guys. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the problem when you got folks who live all over the world and scheduling gets tough. White is making the capstone move. He's got that hard capstone. This is a tack threat. Spreading left would be a road. Spreading up is not a road. Important to note. Spreading up would be a tack threat, but not a road. So black brings that capstone down. White may decide to bring this stack upwards may decide to bring it up one, which would be a threat in the horizontal direction and would also be a threat in the vertical maybe. Would it or would it not? One, two, no. It would not be a threat in the vertical, but it is a flip threat in the horizontal. Black may bring that wall, that capstone stack right back up there. <laughs> that would be funny. <sighs> but what is White's play? What is their play? How many flats do they have in that stack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a full seven stack. Black drops that second wall, cutting off White's ability to make that threat in that direction. 
So black back to seven walls on the board here. <laughs> That's insane. Seven walls from black, one wall from white right now. Oh man, how is that going to play out? But also important to note that that wall at e4 also cuts off black's ability to take that e3 capstone stack, spread up and smash up here to go for that horizontal road in the upper half of the board. Now, we have seen a lot of captures and way more captures than we normally see uh, between top level players. And we're only at move 37 now. White comes over with that wall onto B2, uh, really gutting Black's uh, vertical threat over there. And now that Black's capstone is cut off from this upper half of the board, that horizontal threat is basically dead also. So White is is definitely in control this game. And I am interested to see how this all turns out. Ooh, I can see a potentially devastating move from white here in the next couple turns. Um, but, oh, never mind. Not, not that devastating. But moving some of these over to G4 would threaten this stack up above and attack threat. Black would have to come over with the capstone, uh, likely, depending on how many uh, flats he left behind here. Uh, coming over with a double capstone, dropping at F3 and at G3, and then the white would still be able to smash that. But if they left no white behind on F4, then black could come up with the wall on G3, but I don't think that would be how it plays out. But that is a strong possibility there. Good option. There are a lot of walls on the board here from black. Seven. Seven walls. <laughs> black coming over with their capstone onto E3. Preempting White's ability to go over onto G4, I guess. And also effectively cutting off that whole vertical line over there. White now shifting gears, playing at G1, going for that horizontal on that side. Um, I don't know how this is going to play out. This is going to be a very interesting game I'd say if black can come back uh, but they are currently in a tough spot in terms of positioning on the board for making roads and also for for flat counts uh, I imagine white is way ahead on flat count but let's take a quick count one more time 10 for black which means 12 with the combing 13 for white so not that far behind actually in addition to that black does have um it looks like fewer reserves in total and has a plus three move available to them with that capstone now so black actually not out of the game in terms of flat count let's see how long he can stay alive and if he can make some positive threats here uh, to force himself into a better position. We also see that Black is ahead in terms of time. He's got almost three minutes on Goelja. We're down to about turn 40, and they're getting a little bit low on time. Goelja down to five and a half minutes on the clock. Fwib down to eight and a half. White now placing at D2. Can Continuing along this horizontal line, really just wanting to make that connection, uh, make those threats. Playing at C2 would not be a threat, but playing at C2 and then coming over would be a threat, or C2 and then smashing would also be a threat. But C2 and then smashing would be a bad idea because then this double stack comes left, cuts that off, makes a threat. Not great for, for white there. Black, probably trying to think how they can turn this one around. Uh, 
I'm thinking about it too. Going ahead and placing it C2. And we see white place it D3. Not attack threat. Black immediately brings that wall over onto D3, keeping white from being able to make that attack threat on the next turn. What is the play here for white? Um, white fills in at C3, not attack threat. Black plays at C1 to keep white from being able to play at C1 because playing at C1 for white would be attack threat for them. I think black has given up on being able to create a road here and is just really playing for flats and trying to keep white from making a road. Uh, black has seven walls on the board here. going to be really difficult to win via road for anyone, really, with seven walls on the board. But also, going to be hard for Black to win with flat count when he's used seven walls. So I think that the fact that uh, Black still has a chance in terms of the flat game after dropping seven walls is pretty incredible. White now playing at D1. Again, not attack threat, but it seems like White is setting up for something, trying to make some sort of play here. Black playing at E1. They may both be going for some sort of board fill as well. I don't think White's going for board fill. Even though White is currently ahead on flats, uh, White does see the possibility for Black uh, running out of reserves quicker too, and then being able to run this capstone down for a plus two or plus three move. Uh, granted, the plus three move would also, or the plus two move, result in white recapturing that and being able to make a positive flat kind differential move of their own. Uh, white now playing up at a5. Looks like they're both playing for flats now at this point. They might be both going for a board fill. Uh, let's see how this plays out. I can't imagine this plays out well for Black. Because Black makes this move, White will just follow it up. Oh no, Black's gonna bring this whole stack down left and then bring it left. Or bring bring a whole, down, whole thing down, sorry, to F2 and then spread it left to keep this capstone from capturing it. That, I think, is gonna be the play. And then... Then we'll see... Uh, black potentially get ahead unless white follows it with that capstone. So let's see. But if white falls with the capstone, leaves behind the blacks here, then this wall captures it and relinquishes and liberates those captives. I don't know. This is a pretty tricky end game position, and I can see black coming out ahead on this, uh, but I can also see white coming out ahead. It just depends on how well each player plays this end game position again there are three open spaces the game will end if all of those are filled we see white committing dropping one there if black drops a flat here i think white will win one flat so let's take a quick count two three four. 19 for white Eighteen for black, so white has plus one right now. This would be the time to bring that whole stack down onto F two. I think that's basically his only move he's got to uh, to get a positive flat count differential uh, move in the future without immediately relinquishing it. He is down by one, but he does have time on his side. He's got an extra bit of time. He does bring that whole stack down onto F2. Now, where will white play? White should not play here. Hmm. 
white drops a flat here and black spreads across. Black comes out on top and turns a flat for the moment. White can follow with this with this capstone stack. This is going to be a tough one. Guelja may have been expecting black to spread downward with it instead of coming down first before spreading left, which would have resulted in, in white winning. Uh, so Guelja is probably rethinking his plans now, now that he's noticed that black can now spread left for uh, a stronger positive flak on differential move. Brings the capstone down. Not only did he bring the capstone down to follow, but he's also making attack threat here. Spreading left would be a road. Black is unable to make his spread move without relinquishing a road to white. So Black can, in order to stop that, bring his own wall down onto his own flat. Or he could bring this wall up onto G3 as well. But that would just be replaced by another uh, flat here at F4 to continue that threat. So I think ultimately this is looking really good for white and black is going to have to make some capture moves and let white keep dropping more flats onto the board. Does a self capture and I think, I don't know, I worry about that self capture. I think maybe capturing up onto G3 could have been better, but because the self capture is effectively a negative flat count differential move. So now now their flat counts, this would put white farther ahead. Uh, let's take a look here. One, two. Nineteen for white. Seventeen for black. So black is now minus two. Black filling in. Okay, now at minus one. Okay, Guelja up by one flat here. If Guelja drops a flat somewhere, Black is forced to make a capturing move that does not leave behind, uh, that, that, that has to leave behind an empty space. So he has to make probably this F2 throw. Okay, now Black's got to make that throw. Can't make a throw with this wall because that's stopping him from winning with a road. I think he's got to make this F2 move here, throwing it and spreading it on E2 and D2 for the plus 3 move, which would put him ahead on flats. Because he's currently at 18. And white is at 20. Well, it's down to three and a half minutes. If we have down to six and a half. This is not looking great for Fwib at the moment. He does make that move. This now, because that was a plus three move. This now takes uh, Fwib up by one. So he's got plus one flat count differential for black. If white were to spread this stack downward, uh, at least a little bit, that would work out against them because ultimately black would come over and capture with the wall stack, make a, a, another plus three move, while white would 
capture this, black would be able to run that up, and that would be a lot harder to come back from. Hmm. So white doesn't want to do that. If white drops a flat anywhere, black will win. Because black can then fill in and get plus one, uh, win, win by one flat here at the end. So white's got to think their moves through carefully. White may decide to smash here onto e3 which would both be a plus one move and threaten this stack. No, it would be a plus two move. No, no, that wouldn't be a plus two move. That would, that would just be a standard plus one move, which would allow black to retain that. Okay, does do it. Black can now place up at d6 to retain his plus one. Oh, how is this going to work out? So he plays at d6 to retain his plus one, and black and white comes down with the whole capstone stack onto e2. Black then takes this d3 stack and th throws it. No, that would lead to a to a road for for white. Oh, that wouldn't work. Oh, what's the play here? This is actually a good move, I'd say, to smash. That. I think that was the best move he could have made in that situation. Now for black, what do you do here? Do you recapture your own stack with your capstone? That's a minus one flat count differential move. Black takes this wall stack, brings it left. Why? Why, why, why? Was white wanting to smash this? Yeah, I could see that. Oh yeah, smashing that would have basically been Tinue. <laughs> Never mind, that's what he wanted to do. Uh, wow, I didn't even see that. Black, though, Fwib saw that move, saw, saw this being the better move than capturing down onto E2. Uh, but Guelja captured down onto E2 anyway here. Now, what is Black's move? Is Black going to come up with G3? Black comes up with g3. White could potentially play here at f2, which would be attack threat, by spreading upwards and smashing here onto e6. And it would be a... Oh. Well, it's a different attack threat, and I don't think it's as good. Uh, but he can come left now and smash onto d4 for a road. But black can come up with this wall, I guess, onto g4. No, but black smashes their own wall to keep that from happening. Oh my goodness, this is getting crazy here. What's the play now? What is the play now? Will white capture up with part of this stack onto f3? I feel like that's a really good play. Capturing up with part of the stack onto f3. And then coming down with the capstone for the hard cap. No, he just brings the whole capstone stack down. Which is... Not a threat. Will black just come over with this wall now onto F3? Yeah, to be able to spread upwards for flat count differential. Guelja down to a minute and a half. If we have just under six. I think that white could have played that one better. I think back here, when he tossed this onto this spot, I think what he should have done instead was play at F2. Um, I think that would have been a much stronger threat and allowed him to retain this stack. But, um, but yeah, now 
No, I'm not sure what's going to happen. White comes down with this stack onto E1. Now this is a threat. And black can stop it by bringing this wall stack down instead of going up. How many are in this? One, two, three, four, five. So white, do they want to make a hard capstone here again with their E3? They do. Going up is not a threat, I don't think. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes, that is in fact attack threat in the vertical direction. Black might want to bring that. No. I guess they could bring the wall down or they could bring the capstone right. I feel like the capstone coming right is probably more likely here. Wait. Okay. I think the capstone going right is the more likely move. If you're confused by a lot of the moves made in the last, uh, I guess, 10 moves or five moves or so, um, you're not alone. <laughs> There's a lot going on. They're both trying to win on flat count and win on roads, and it just devolved into chaos. Black now brings this capstone over to the right. Now, not only does this stop that vertical tack threat, this is also a horizontal tack threat for Black. Not only is it also a horizontal tack threat for Black, it's also a vertical tack threat for Black. Playing here at D2 would connect all the way here. Playing at G2 would connect. Playing this wall stack to the right would connect. Playing at G3 would connect. All of those are threats that Black is making right now. White comes up with that capstone. I think Black might be able to win here. No, they, they don't have enough uh, Blacks in this stack to throw up all the way. Um... I don't think this is a threat for white. Let's take a look at this. So black can take this whole stack. White, black, black, wall. So they can make a threat on the next turn. And that's actually not bad at all. Uh, making that threat on the next turn. And I don't think there's... Uh, no, they can't. Wait, if they go white, black, black, wall yeah that would actually be fine that would work that would not result in a loss i think fib should do that they should take this f1 stack and spread it all the way up to f5 white black black wall yeah spread it to f5 that's attack threat and it's fun Nope, he just comes up with a flat. Eh, you know what? I like that too. Also attack threat. And he can protect it with this with this wall stack. I think that might actually work better for him if he waits until this gets captured and then throws that upwards. White finally moves that capstone to the right, cuts off that threat. Black fills in. Not a threat for black, but keeps white from making a threat in the horizontal direction there. Man, this is chaos. This board is chaos. White tosses that to the left. And smashes.
Now, that smash is not a tag threat. But what's Black going to do here? <laughs> Black takes the capstone stack, throws it down to the bottom. Uh, now, this stack can spread upwards for attack threat or spread left for attack threat. All of those totally viable. Um, but we're seeing a lot of crazy moves here. We're also seeing white now below one minute on the clock. White now takes this capstone left. This is, again, another tack threat in the horizontal direction. Black comes up with their own capstone. Now, this is also setting up for a capture of this big stack. White spreads upwards. This is a tack threat in the horizontal direction for white. And oh, Black stops it by bringing that capstone to the right. What is going on? What is this craziness? This turn, this game is wild. It is absolutely wild, and I, I cannot do it justice right now. All right, E4 is placed. This renews the horizontal tack threat. Black cuts it off with the capstone bringing down. Someone was saying they thought black won with E2 to, to E5 at some point. Okay, C5 was played here to go for the tack threat again black comes left with the wall let's see there was an e2 to e5 move that would win um no that wouldn't have won okay back to back to the reality i guess okay so black wall comes right white continuing to go left over here with that stack to keep black from getting it with the wall Oh my goodness. Now, we do have a bot that can analyze games after the fact. Okay, this is a tag threat from Black. Playing here at D2 would be a win, or also bringing this capstone stack down would also be a win. But we do have a bot that can analyze games after the fact. However, it does not take into account Comey, so this... So the bot would basically be useless on uh, on this game, unfortunately, which which is a shame because this would be a great one to analyze with a computer. Um, let's take a look at that. White comes down, not a tack threat. No, not a tack threat. Goodness. Okay, then black goes. Up with their capstone. This is a tack threat in the horizontal direction for black. Black can come right with B5. Oh man. This game is nuts. Go out to down below a minute again. Fwib just below four minutes on the clock. Go out to definitely more press for time. I don't even know what the flat count is anymore. Uh, white comes up with that capstone to cut off Black's horizontal threat. And... No threat from White here. Black could come left with B3 and make attack threat, which would be kind of sneaky because it would throw this stack, drop a White, then a Black, and then the capstone, which would connect, which would be kind of fun. Uh, but not going to go for that. Instead, going to make uh, just a placement here. Go for that tack threat yet again. It comes up with the wall to capture and stop that tack threat. 
Uh, can black immediately renew? I, I mean, yes, but not in any meaningful way. Let's take a look at the flat count. Fifteen for white. Twenty for black. So black has definitely come back up in terms of flats, which, I mean, it could have been anything based on the absolute insanity that's been occurring in the past few moves. Black playing at B2 now. Um, so now it's, yeah, it's 20 to 15 in flats. Black not making another threat or building towards one. They may just be dropping their flats now. Uh, since they see that it's not likely to make a road at any point. And they want to run out of the reserves. They've got one, two, three, four left. And white has six. Yeah, white has six left. So black can run out of reserves quicker and end this. And in the chat, Arch Venison said, White should be thinking about an opportunity to smash F1. And that's exactly what they did immediately after that message popped up. Uh, we see White come over and immediately smash F1. Uh, able to relinquish, or no, not relinquish, able to recapture those, uh, those flats. And let's see, one, two, three, four. Not able to make attack threat here, but able to... Uh, or not able to make a road here, is able to make a tag threat, uh, but not falling too far behind in terms of flats. Black coming down all the way with that capstone stack, uh, making a tag threat of their own in the horizontal direction, able to place here at C1 or capture over to make that threat from G2 to A1 or A2. White spreads upwards, making a vertical tag threat. Not making a horizontal one, though. Okay, so just this vertical threat. Black can stop that by coming over with the capstone. They do that. Oh, man. This game is nuts. I mean, if you just look at the PTN or the portable tack notation off to the left, you can see some of the crazy moves that have been going on for the past 20 moves or so. And it's just insanity. And again, if you're unfamiliar with Portable Tack Notation or PTN, check out the Portable Tack Notation video of Tack University. So white then moves left, makes a big capture, able to come down again uh, to renew that tack threat and also recover a lot of flats there. I think that's a great play. Uh, I don't, but also able to spread left for a road. Yeah, I didn't even see that road, but now white comes down with that stack. Now black is probably hurting on flats. <laughs> I think white is now way ahead on flats. Also, white has a horizontal and a vertical tack threat at the same time here. Black needs to be able to stop both of them, and I don't think... Oh, yes, he can. He has to bring, I think, this capstone all the way down onto E2. I think that's basically his only move. Yeah, white is very far in the lead now with this with this one, but black has to bring this caps down to E2. It's exactly what he does. Uh, this is not a tack threat for white, even though it's very close to a road for white here. Black now also not able to make a tack threat here on this turn, but able to make one on the following turn. Uh, this is some crazy, crazy tack here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the flat count again because I'm unable to keep track of it. Uh, apparently no time. White comes down with this capstone. This is another tack threat for, for white in the horizontal direction. Capturing up with D2 uh, would be a road for white. Black can stop that by spreading left. Also make their own tack threat here, but I don't think they're going to do that. They may just spread up one. And retain some. Um, oh man, this is a really tough position here. Uh, I 
it's there's got to be a spread from here spreading left or spreading up with this capstone is really the only way um apparently i'm wrong white tosses that capstone all the way up what is going on all right this is what is even happening all right there's another attack threat from white black can bring this capstone down now if white renews by placing here black can capture up but with just by still leaving behind this Okay, spreading up did lose what I was talking about earlier. Uh, spreading that up. Yeah, it does lose. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I think spreading less left loses too, potentially. But yeah, spreading up definitely loses. My bad. Um, <laughs> see, I am not good under time pressure. Uh, Fwib and Gwelge are much better than I am. White now, huh, does not renew the attack threat. Not renewing the attack threat. Black can come down now with this stack, recover F2. And that's exactly what he does. White now plays at D1, making attack threat in this horizontal direction here by playing at F1. Black can come down with this capstone, but then white's free to make this, these attack threats up here again. Oh, that's smart. That is really smart. Uh, I think white, I think black can spread left now without losing immediately. Yeah, black can spread left and not lose and also make attack threat, but not lose is the important part. Twenty one flats for white. Fifteen for black. 21 to 15, white in the lead right now. Uh, Guelch is just barely up above a minute on the clock. Fwib now finally at about a minute and a half. <laughs> we see in the chat here. This is an excellent game. I thought I joined towards the end, but these sevens go on for a while. No, sevens typically don't last like this and aren't this crazy. This is not a typical sevens game. <laughs> I, I just want to make that clear. Not a typical sevens game. Uh, black does spread left. White comes up to stop that. Uh, this is not attack threat for white. Black comes up again to further stop more threats from happening in the horizontal direction. I think that's a really smart play here. Uh, and you kind of knew that white would come up with that capstone. So that was a smart play to come up with their own capstone. Cut this capstone off from this one. Um, white can still make attack threat just by placing a flat here at E5. Um, or placing a flat at E6. Or a flat at F4. All of those are attack threats for white in the vertical direction. Oh. <sighs> White instead spreads upward to make that attack threat. That's a much stronger move because now it's attack threat here and here. And that wall has to come over. It's basically the only move that stopped both of those threats. White can play at F4 and that's another attack threat for White being able to jump all the way up and smash there. If they can reach. I don't think they can. One, two, three. Yeah, they can. If they play at F4, that's that would be able to reach. Black comes right, makes the attack threat for black. So now a flat would not stop this. A wall does. Gets white to drop a wall here. 
Oh my goodness. Minute 10 for Goelja, just under two minutes for Fwib. Nineteen for white in terms of flats. Eighteen for black. White is up by one flat right now. And black has some good flat count differential moves. Okay, black just made a plus two move. Now black is up by one. Black up by one flat. Gwelja with two reserves left. Fwib with three reserves left. Good commentary. Always, right? Always. <laughs> this is probably my worst commentary because it's so hard to follow this crazy game. Uh, Abyss is saying F4 for for white. F4. Oh, that would be attack threat. I don't think white saw that. White moves left for some reason. Hmm. Oh, so they can come left for the... Positive flak on differential moves. Black now coming down for more positive flak on differential moves. Let's let's see this. So it was up by two, up by one. Uh, now even. That was a plus two. So now black's up by two flats. At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. Now black is up by three flats. I think both players, despite white having been able to make a, a threat with F4 in the last turn, both players have kind of given up on making roads and have switched to flats yet again. I mean, they did that 30 moves ago, and uh, we saw how that turned out. And we see white play at E2. White down to one reserve left. And I think black's ahead on flats here. Black's definitely ahead on flats now. Sixteen for white. Nineteen for black. Now it's not nineteen for black. Now it's uh, minus two, 17 for black, and plus one, so 17, 17, I think. Oh, so if black drops a flat and goes to 18, white can drop a flat and take the draw. And I don't think there's anything black can do to keep white from taking the draw here. There's no positive flat count differential move he can make. Yeah, this is going to be a draw. Holy cow. Yeah, I think this is this is a draw. And if it is a draw, that means Fwib doesn't get a full two points for this. And that means that Abyss wins the Chandrian Invitational Tag Tournament of 2022. I think, yeah, that's it. That is it here. Oh no, not gonna be taking it. Looks like white is still going for a road maybe.
I'm surprised he went for the capture here instead of just placing a black flat, but now we're seeing him place another flat. White comes over. Now he's got a plus two move available to him. But if he makes this plus two move, black can make a plus two move to the right as well. So I think that'll cancel it out. So black can place a flat now. Maybe up at a7. Yeah, black should place a flat here. And now if this white wall goes right, then he can follow it with this and make up for it, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he makes a capture? That's not a good capture. That's a bad capture. I think this one is going to go to Goelja. Yeah, now white's got another positive flat on differential move. That just I think that just gave him the win. If we're down to five seconds, though, he's got no time to think. Yeah, I think I think white could have taken the win there. But I think he's just being sure. He's coming right with that. Black should come right with the capstone. But now white can come left and capture here. He took the draw instead of the win. He had the win, and he took the draw. He could have spread it left and then placed. Oh, no. Goelja did not take his time. I think he was just worried about playing quickly to maybe work on Fwib, or maybe he miscounted. But he had the win if he had just thrown this left. He had the win. Locked in. After Black made that blunder up here, when Black captured up here instead of just playing a flat that allowed white to be able to take the win on flats uh but he miscounted it and uh and got the draw anyway wow that was 86 moves that is 86 moves I don't know what the record is for the longest game on Playtac is in terms of moves, but it's really close to that. Uh, and I think that was played on a 6x6 game, but this is definitely the longest 7x7 game we've seen, and it was absolutely crazy. Uh, really, really... Uh, that was a fun game, guys. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't what we expected, and it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't standard normal tack <laughs> but man that was a good time that was fun and uh congratulations to both players for drawing and congratulations to abyss who happened to be watching this game on winning the chandrian tack invitational tournament of 2022 oh man good game folks really fun uh <laughs> oh man Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is where you can find all sorts of resources, including strategy guides and people to play with online, whether that be through playtac.com or right in the Discord itself, playing asynchronously. You can play just mo one move a day if you want to. Uh, it's a great way to get some TAC in if you're low on time. A great time and uh, a great game of attack we saw today but that's all i got for you today so until next time have a great day and happy tacking